Hello again guys! A few months ago I made a video about the predecessor to this TV. This is the Seiki 42 inch 4K TV. The previous one I think was SE42UM. I bought it at HH Gregg, it was about 300 bucks, and in that video you could see it had some significant performance issues. As far as displaying content, it was beautiful, it worked really, really well. However, as soon as you would hook a game console or a PC up to it, there was some significant input lag. I've been told that since that time, since that video came out, there's actually been a firmware update made to address that but I unfortunately returned that TV just after I got back from vacation. But, as you can see behind me, there is another TV here. This is the 2015 model. It's the Seiki 42 inch SE42 UMGT. Yep, just checked it, that's right. And this one is a bit more smart, it's got more to it, still 4K, and supposedly doesn't have the same input lag that the previous one had, so it shouldn't need any firmware updates to make it work better. Let's open this box, we'll take a look at it. Obviously you're not gonna be able to see 100% just how well it does, but I am filming this in 4K, so it will help it out a little bit. Now the unboxing of this, I'm imagining it's gonna go pretty similarly to the way that it went with the last one, so you can watch that video for more details. Basically, we got the feet, we got the TV, we got a remote, stuff like that. We're just gonna assemble it. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, we have got it out of the packaging now. We've got everything set up, not plugged in or anything yet, just up and on the table. And as you can see, it does have three HDMI ports. They all do say 4K at 60 hertz. The USB port says it's capable of supplying five volts at 500 milliamps. There's a LAN port, and I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna use that, but it's still an interesting option, as well as optical stereo out. Unfortunately, I do not have a stereo set up, so won't be using that either. And to make it a little bit easier to see as we walk through this whole setup process, I went ahead and turned off the light so you're just looking directly at the TV now. We're at the setup wizard so we're gonna go ahead and say okay. We're gonna pick the time zone. We're gonna say this is in home mode. And we're gonna go ahead and set up a wireless network because I'm not plugged in as I said. So far the menus have been very responsive. Not that that speaks a whole lot to the TV but still. And I can see that it does not do 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Wouldn't really expect it to but just thought I'd throw that out there. And I went ahead and gave it my connection information there. It says connecting okay so should be good. And there we go. Here's our main screen, our main menu. We've got a bunch of different streaming options available like Netflix and Vudu and YouTube, AccuWeather, uh, some games, and Pandora. Be really curious to see if there's a way to get additional sources on here, but these sort of tick the boxes for the things that I would want to stream, at least at the moment. In terms of media, you can choose photos or music, so I would assume if you have something USB connected, you can use that. For source, you've got TV, which is the traditional coax cable, HDMI 1, 2, 3, as well as USB, VGA, and the AV and component options, which probably will never get used here. And then setup, you can come in and look at the system, get some info about it there, closed captioning and date and time stuff. You can change audio settings here. You've got your standard mode. Network settings, of course. We're currently on wireless network, but you could change it to wired here. You can also deactivate Netflix and Vudu. You've got picture settings here. Right now we're in picture mode standard. And as far as the picture modes, there are standard, movie, user, where you can set your own custom one, and dynamic. Now the MEMC down here, I think that might actually be the game mode. It's currently set to middle. There's also high and off as options. I'm gonna leave it on middle for the moment, and whenever I do try something hooked to it that's a game console or a PC, I'll try changing that if I have problems. And then in advanced settings, there's noise reduction, white balance, things like that. You have a lock option. We're not gonna do that. Support, if you need support. And channel settings, where you can set it if you're using cable or an over-the-air antenna. And I think that's kind of the basics of it. And of course, when I hit exit there, I hit menu. I went out to where it's gonna to try to run a channel scan. I don't have anything hooked up. So at this point, I could technically go ahead and hook it up to Netflix or YouTube. Let's just give that a shot. We'll go to YouTube and the YouTube app is loading. Not bad. It says I can sign in. It has a little tick to it. It's a slightly delayed tick. So you may, you, know, you can't really see that, but when I push the button, just uh, like less than a half second later, it does come back and click. But let's see, best of YouTube in 4K. Farting gym instructor prank is on the best of YouTube 4K. Good to know. And I'm not gonna show much of anything, but here's MKBHD's One Plus X impressions. Hey, what is up guys? Cheap phones are getting good, and good phones are getting cheap. Think about it. It this looks phone, pretty crispy and pretty nice One from Plus here. X. It's gonna cost $249. $249 off contract, brand new, in the box, everything. Three years ago, bucks. And it looks like it's got an awful long way to go in terms of amount of volume it's going to put out. But very crispy, very clear, and just sort of trying a few different things out. I'm not going to be watching a lot of these videos or anything, but 
Again, looks very nice and crispy. Very nice to see this coming direct from YouTube. And I think I'll take just a few minutes. I'll go ahead and get my Netflix account set up and my Voodoo account, and then we can continue it. Okay, I was able to get signed into Voodoo and Netflix. You can see here I've got my list of movies that I own through Voodoo or that I, I, whatever you call it through Voodoo. So I should be able to just click on any of these and then go in and actually watch them. And that load time wasn't bad at all. And actually down here it mentions SD, HD, and HDX. So I would assume that that means 4K. I mean, so far it looks really, really nice. Yeah, very nice, very crispy. Again, not sure how much of this is actually going to translate to you guys. But then Netflix as well, you know, I'm signed in. Seems to be working all right. The interface is not super duper fast, but it's, it's really not bad. So I'm not really sure how this is going to do in terms of 4K. I know Netflix is capable of doing 4K. I just don't know if all of their content can do it yet. So I'll have to look around on that. That's not a big deal at all. The biggest problem I've had with any of this so far is just typing on it. Because logging into Netflix, logging into Voodoo, I actually had to type it in using the on-screen keyboard. And doing that with a remote, not good. There have been some other interfaces like Roku and like Amazon Fire TV where you basically just go to the website of whatever service it is, you put in a certain code that the TV or the device shows you, and it logs you in. That would be preferable, unless this has an included keyboard and it doesn't. But at this point, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and get the Shield TV in here, and then I'm going to put a laptop on it, and maybe a game system like the Xbox One, and just try out some different things. So actually, in looking at the Shield TV again, the resolution is currently set to 1080p 60. However, Figured out if I come in here, I can change it to 4K 23.976 or 4K 30 hertz. So let me go ahead and turn that on. There we go. Resolution is now changed. We should be at 4K total. We're gonna hit the home button. And actually, this is one of the problems that I had with it previously. I've gone ahead, I've got the, the shield controller, and uh, I'm gonna give Half-Life 2 a bit of a shot and see how it works out. See if there's any delay or input lag or anything. It doesn't appear to have it so far. It appears that there's a little bit of a lag. Nowhere near as bad as it was before. There's definitely a lag. I mean, if you can see this. Hmm. So I've been messing around with this a little bit. I've got my laptop here hooked up to it. You can see here I've got two displays showing up. This is my main display is on the laptop. And then this one, I did have to come in here and tell it to extend the display and to use the 3840 by 2160 resolution but it does appear to be using it. It looks pretty. And there is a bit of a lag. Uh, there's a little bit of delay. It's nowhere near as bad as the previous model was. Uh, a lot of it just has to do with the mouse pointer. So I'm gonna have to try it out with the desktop as well. But so far, compared to the previous model I tested, so much better. And actually, I, I came through and started looking at some of the display settings. Everything was set to like 300%. So I, it was a recommended setting, I think. So I changed it back to 125, which is what my main laptop normally uses. Lots more screen real estate. It becomes a lot more apparent that it's actually 4K now. So if I can open up this 4K video, it's a little bit stuttery. I think that's actually my laptop just having problems with it because my laptop doesn't have any sort of dedicated graphics, but the colors, the picture, it looks very, very nice. It plays smoothly when the laptop is allowing it to play smoothly. So it's doing very well. There you go, it gets a little stuttery, but again, that's probably the laptop having problems because my laptop's not as powerful as it needs to be graphics-wise. And actually, after doing a bit more research, I'm back on the built-in Netflix app, and I don't know if you can tell, but up there in the top left corner, uh, it says currently it's at 480, and it's going back and forth between 480 and 1080. Uh, I've got 4K enabled on my Netflix account at the moment, and it's not taking advantage of that, so that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, I looked on Netflix's site and it appears that Seiki TVs are not included in their 4K capable thing. So that's just one bit of a downer for this. So don't come into this expecting that the built-in Netflix is going to be able to do 4K. If you want to be able to do that, you'll have to have something external like the Shield TV device or like an Xbox One. I think that'll do 4K, but the built-in just isn't going to do it. So I went ahead and I mounted this device on the wall and I've been using it as the primary display on one of my desktops for about a week now. And I thought I'd go ahead and give you just a little bit of a follow-up as to where I am with it. So far, I've only been able to really get it to do 4K at 30 hertz consistently. Most of the problem with that is to do with my graphics cards because Nvidia, well, at least the cards that I have don't support HDMI 2.0 and to get 4K 60 hertz, you have to have HDMI 2.0. If this had a display port on it, I could do 4K 60 hertz 
but it does not. The Shield TV does support 4K at 60 hertz, but you have to have a proper cable for it. I did have it working briefly. I've just got the wrong cable on there at the moment, so it's not currently doing 4K 60, but that is an option. So if you have the Shield TV and you're looking at this TV as an option, understand that it will do 4K 60. You just have to have a proper HDMI 2.0 cable to do it. Netflix on the Shield TV will do 4K, and obviously running in PC mode, it will do 4K as well. And I have played games on this on a PC, and I have not noticed noticed any input lag. My son and I have played Rocket League on it quite a few times at this point. Absolutely no issues. So as compared to the previous model, this thing is much, much, much better. And considering the fact that this was $298 with 11% off on Cyber Monday, so it was like $280 out the door, I think this was an absolute steal. Even if I can only ever get it to do 4K at 30 hertz on my desktop, I really don't care because it is an absolutely beautiful picture. I hope you can tell that from the 4K that you're seeing. The input lag issues seem to be mostly dealt with. I'm not going to say that it's perfect, and I do kind of wish that I had a display port, but it doesn't. But it definitely is going to get the job done for me. Primarily, I've been using this TV as a monitor for media consumption, very light gaming, and of course, anything and everything you want to do on the Shield TV. And that's exactly what I would recommend it for. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to leave a thumbs up below the video if you like this video. Subscribe to receive more of my videos when they become available. We'll see you again next time. Bye guys.